Come and have a look at this. I'm Richard Vobes, TV's bald explorer, and I'm discovering Britain. You know, we're privileged to live in such a picturesque country. The architecture is remarkable, the landscape exquisite, and the history comprehensive. But it can often be a tricky thing to know where to go. Today, I'm looking for the loo in a priory. Care to join me? Lewis is the county town of East Sussex, not far from Brighton, and well worth exploring if you like your history. One such place is the lovely ruins of the Priory of St Pancras. Ah, there doesn't seem as much of the vast and splendid buildings that there once was, and I think we can put that down to Henry VIII and his henchman Cromwell. Thomas, not Oliver. We all know that it was Thomas Cromwell that masterminded the downfall of the monasteries in the mid-16th century for Henry VIII. But who owned this priory? Well, it was founded by William de Warren and his wife towards the end of the 11th century. And he installed the first ever Benedictine order of Cluny monks. They built impressively and this became one of the wealthiest monasteries in all of England. It's just a shame that so much of it has gone. But in its day, St Pancras was absolutely stunning. And the main church was bigger than Chichester Cathedral. And then there were shed loads of other ancillary buildings, such as chapels, infirmaries, dormitories, oh yeah, and toilets. Yes, it transpires that the silent order of Cluniac monks were very big on lavatories. In the 1940s and 50s, you were considered well off if you had a small outbuilding that housed the porcelain bog. Shut the door, read the paper, do your business, simple. Roll a clock back a thousand years and these monks had water closets in absolute splendour. They would pull up their robes and do their deposit high up in a personal cubicle above a conduit which would take away the effluent, probably to the River Ouse, where some poor sod, fishing for his supper, catches it on the end of his rod. Lovely. The ruins are open to the public, free to view and easy to get to. And not bad for over 500 years old. You know, I find it a bit of an irony really that although most of the monastery buildings have now gone, with a lot of the masonry finding it into the local buildings, that what is left, and the vast proportion of it, just happens to be the monk's loo. Join me again when I go exploring. And then there were shed loads of other ancillary buildings such as chapels, dormitories and... <sighs> so, roll a clock back a thousand, roll a clock back, roll a clock back a thousand years and these monks had water closets in absolute splendour. They would pull up their... That's right, they would do. Sorry, just, um, just keep rolling that although the monastery buildings have now all gone, virtually all of them, that I cock that up completely. There doesn't seem to be much of that vast and splendid building that was once here, and I think we can probably put that down to Henry VIII and his henchmen. Oh, bollocks.